Okay, so, so today is the last course of the semester. Last time we started uh, with the notion of ribbon monoidal category. So a ribbon monoidal category is a braided rigid monoidal category with a twist with a ribbon structure. We justified the name ribbon by providing the universal ribbon category made by a topological ribbon. So we explained that. And the twist is given by the topological double twist of the ribbon. Uh, and we, ex we mentioned the, the, the Reshitikin to IF invariant of. Uh, of uh, link using this category and recovering the Jones polynomial. And we ended by asking when, in what sense this ribbon structure is required to recover the Jones polynomial. Why, if you just consider the braiding structure, you can a priori make some <clears throat> similar construction and the question is, what's the problem with this similar construction? Anyway, so today we will um, we will continue. We will provide them. So before that, we define the notion of. Hmm, Connection is not good. And now, I don't know anything. Hello. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? So today we will uh, um, again provide some uh, results involving the Greenfeld morphism. So before that, we need to mention uh, uh, um, a mistake in the book, which was mentioned by uh, Pavel Ettingoff in his uh, Corrigen Da. So be careful. So let's see. Be a braided tensor category over. Field K. Um, so, as pointed out by Pavel Ettingoff in his errata, so he wrote the errata file. Um, Lemma, so in the book, the lemma 8, 10, 5 is false. <coughs> namely, namely, um, uh, so what is false is the following. If you, um, so you have that. Co-evaluation x x x star. You make the braiding, and then you apply the evaluation x, which is an element in and of one. So in the tensor case, it reduced to the field. So it's a it's a, a scalar, and the <coughs> what is false is the fact that it is non-zero. So it's false, at least. At least if K has characteristic positive. So I don't know 
in the zero characteristic. What about k of characteristic zero? So be careful. So this lemma was used to prove the, the next uh, proposition. So in fact, the, the next proposition will be proved without using that. In fact, there is a, a proof, there is a direct proof of the next proposition which does not use this lemma, which is in fact easier, immediate. So it's okay. <clears throat> so be careful about that. This is false. This is false in general. But question is it true in characteristic zero? I don't know. So we will need uh, um, so let me so for your information let me uh, mention an extended extended Young-Baxter relation. We will need for the proof of the next proposition. So, um, so you start, uh, so you start, so let me just uh, make it uh, just by picture like that. You start from three objects. You apply a morphism F on the two last object. And then you, uh, you apply one braiding like that and one braiding like that. So in the Young Baxter relation, this is also a braiding, but in fact, the proof of the Young Baxter relation, the, the following pictorial proof, do, do not require F to be a braiding. You can F can be anything. So you apply the hexagon, hexagon axiom. You get like that. So same thing. F. And then, so you have only one, only one braiding. So this is an hexagon action. And then you apply the naturality of the braiding. So by naturality, you can um, put that here. <coughs> So, so let me put this here. So it's equal naturality like that. Um, so like that. And F here. And finally, you again apply the hexagon relation and you develop. <clears throat> so you get like that. So first here and here. And finally, F. So you see, um, remark, the usual Young-Baxter relation is with for F equal uh, the, equal the braiding. So I, I missed to write the, the object. You can write X, Y, Z if you want. 
does not matter. So <clears throat> if you put F equal one braiding like that, what you get is a usual Young-Baxter relation, but in fact, in the next uh, proposition, we will need to, in the proof, we will need F to be the reverse of that. <clears throat> but not that it work for any F in particular. F equal like that. So you get, <clears throat> so um, if you start like that, and then, so you see the difference with the usual Baxter relation here. The one, the, the string on the left is above, above, but here it's um, no, B, above, here it's below. So this, this, this still work. Um, can do like that, like that, and like that. So we will need that. <clears throat> We will use it in the proof of the next proposition. Okay. Okay. So you see this one went there. <clears throat> okay. So next proposition. He's saying that the, the Drinfeld morphism, in fact, is a natural isomorphism. So we, we know that the Drinfeld morphism is a natural transformation, but in fact, it's a natural isomorphism. Proposition. <clears throat> Let's see, be upgraded. Tensor category. The Drinfeld morphism U IDC to the double dual functor is a natural isomorphism. <clears throat> and to prove that, we will just make so we already know it's a natural transformation. So we just need to um, prove that any Every UX are isomorphism. It is a natural transformation. So we just need check that UX is an isomorphism all X in C. And it is enough to prove that in the simple case. Enough to prove it for X simple. So to do that, we we'll just uh, make, uh, um, we we'll just define a morphism VX and we will compose Vx and Ux and we will get the identity. And we will define it um, algebraically and uh, by picture, and we will make a pictorial proof, which will use more or less what the kind of manipulation we, we did before. Um, with the drink side morphism also. So, so define the natural. So I wonder where, where we need, I don't remember where we need the sim simplicity. Mm, I'm not sure, in fact, we, we, we need to reduce to simple case. 
Um, so let me write this in two parentheses. I'm, the proof is immediate. I'm not sure we, we need to, to, consider only this, to consider the simple case. Anyway, so define the natural transformation V. Transformation um, V by Vx from x double star to x define define by the following composition hmm. so you and you will see it's a more or less pictorial inverse of you Evaluation x tensor id x star x tensor x star tensor x star id x tensor uh, reverse uh, braiding. And um, x tensor x star, star tensor x star and finally id x tensor evaluation of x star to x. So what's the picture? Picture so you start by your Co-evaluation, co x, x, x star, identity, x double star. Then you make the reverse braiding an identity. Then you make the evaluation, identity, x star. Um, okay, and so, so we will, we will prove that Vx compose with Ux equal identity of x, which pictorially mean uh, the following. Um, so you start with Ux. So remember, Ux is like that. Braiding. So the green thread dimorphism. And then you apply uh, Vx. So you would draw the same picture as before, like that. Reverse braiding, like that. So you start from x, you go to x. So we want this to be identity. <clears throat> So we want the proof, we will start from that and we will make manipulation and we will get that. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so, mm. Um. Okay. So. Okay. Let me just write that. So you start from that. Okay. 
So this is equal to do like that. So is equal to that. And then you have that. So you see, you just move um, that here like that. <clears throat> so you you move all this like that here, so you get exactly the same thing. Ta -ta 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 -ta. <clears throat> okay, and so uh, in fact, we will prove something only for this part. So we will. Uh, it's equal to, we will prove a lemma, lemma. So this, Yeah, I forgot now. This is equal to that. So by the by the lemma we will prove now. This is equal to just like that and like that, which is by zigzag relation. identity. This is the next lemma. Okay, so we are reduced to prove that. <clears throat> okay, and the, <clears throat> so the proof is, will be as above, um, the as, As for the proof, for the proof of some previous result we did last week, involving the Drinfeld, involving uh, the Drinfeld morphism. So, <clears throat> so, you start from that. We'll try to make it smaller. Okay, then you apply as we did last time. We will use a naturality. So the this will cross here. So this is equal by naturality. Naturality, uh, something like that. So, one, two, three, four. Um, tiki, tiki. 
Mm. So. Like that. This is here. And here. And here. So we will make it a bit longer, even if you don't. So we just at this step, we can just make like that, but for the next step, we want to make it longer, so it's okay. Then you uh, we will make this cross above like that, the same naturality. Naturality. So one, two, three, four. Mm. Okay. Identity, identity. Okay. The braiding. And um, here, and then we have the, we want this to cross, so like that. Oh no, no cross uh, below. So this one first. Okay, this one. Okay, <clears throat> so we did that. We put it below. This is what is here. Okay, now uh, we develop, we will develop by hexagon axiom these two. So it is equal to by hexagon. We will develop these two. Um, okay. So one, two, three, four. Uh, so the first reading. And then we develop so um, so this one and then this one. Okay. Then we have this reading here. And then we develop again, but now it's, uh, it's uh, below. So, um, so let me check. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This one. And then this one. Okay. And uh, you close here. And here. Okay. <clears throat> so we just developed these two parts by hexagon axiom, which correspond to here and here. Okay, now we will apply our extended Young-Baxter relation. As you see here, the left string is above, but here it's below, below. So we cannot apply the usual Young-Baxter relation, but 
the extended one with this is a morphism f and you apply for so you apply extended one by star in fact extended is not usual in the literature it is me i call it extended it's uh, so we apply that this one um but it's not exactly this one in fact we have to reverse uh, yeah we have to reverse everything but this is the same idea <clears throat> Okay, so maybe I should write uh, um, same idem by reversing every uh, braiding. Anyway, so so what you get the following. So this braiding will go here, and then you will will have these two shifted here. So one two. Three, four. So we start with this ray. And then the two other. Um, so wait. Mm. No, 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 no. This one, no, this two, this one will go here. And these two are shifted. So, the, anyway, the idea is you, you just commute this one with this one. So, you can just push this morphism on the other way of the brain. So, this is exactly. Uh, what we are doing. So these two are these two. And finally, you get uh, this one. Okay. So this is a extended young backstair relation. And then you have the rest. So like that. Like that. Like that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now we will apply the naturality again. So you see here, you can make this crossing one time uh, above and below. So uh, let me use another uh, color. Uh, so you can cross above and below to go here. You apply two times the naturality. And the, yeah, and the hexagonal. So you have to apply. We will make a, a shortcut here. So you, you need first to apply the, <clears throat> the hexagon to make um, this one a, a, a crossing uh, like we did here. Where is it? Like we did here. We uh, 
you first make that like that, and then you make this crossing, and then you, you come back like that. <coughs> so you, you got the idea. So you can go faster. <coughs> so this is equal by hexagon plus naturality plus naturality plus hexagon. Okay, so hexagon one time, here, here, naturality, here, here, and hexagon again to come back to the usual. Uh, so I guess I will just write hexagon and naturality. That, that, that should be applied several times. So you can finish with um, something here. Just like that, okay? So you get this, and then you, you have something like that here. You have, um, so we keep only this one and this one. And so we have something like here. So we have this one. And then like that. Okay. <clears throat> but you see here, you have one crossing, one braiding, and this inverse. So this vanish. It vanish. So by uh, C compose inverse equal identity, you get just something like that, which is by zigzag relation, just that. So we are done. <clears throat> okay. So we prove this relation. is quite uh, fun. So naturality to cross above and then to cross below. Then hexagon relation to develop like that. And then the, we apply the, the extended young baxter to get that. And then you can go above and below to get that. And we, we just get one braiding and it's inverse, which vanish. So you just get that, which is that. That's okay. <clears throat> okay. So this is the end of this proof. So the Drinfeld morphism, the natural isomorphism. <clears throat> Okay. And as I said, as we said, uh, hmm. uh, so wait. Okay, we mark. Um, so if you take um, a natural isomorphism, any natural isomorphism between identity and double dual. If you apply the inverse of the Greenfeld morphism, you get uh, you get a morphism, an automorphism from ID to itself. And then the lemma is that this uh, automorphism is a twist, if and if what we started, the natural uh, isomorphism you start with is pivotal. So remark. So let C be a braided tensor category. And you consider a 
natural isomorphism from the identity to the double dual. B, uh, natural isomorphism. So as I said, you can make a, a twist by composing with inverse of the Greenfield morphism. And this twist is, uh, you can make uh, not a twist, uh, an automorphism of the identity. And it's a twist if only if <coughs> phi is a pivotal. Uh, okay, natural isomorphism, phi x. From x, so you pick one like that. So, but the Dreamfeld, the Dreamfeld uh, morphism U, we know now is also a natural isomorphism. So, phi x. So ux inverse composed with uh, theta x equal uh, ux inverse composed with uh, phi x is from x to x. So it, it defines uh, an element, an element of natural isomorphism, natural from identity to itself. Mm. Okay. And uh, the lemma is saying that it's phi is a pivotal structure if only if theta is twist. Phi is a tensor isomorphism, so a pivotal structure. If and only if theta is a twist. Okay. Um, So proof. Um, um, so we will make the proof after the pause. Pause. La pause. OK. So proof of that. Um, so, um, so phi, phi x equal u x compose theta x. So if phi is a tensor, then so we go by one way if this tensor. So we have phi x tensor y equal phi x uh, tensor phi y. <clears throat> but Phi of x tensor y equal u x tensor y composed theta x tensor y and um, phi x tensor phi y equal um, u x composed theta x tensor u y compose theta y, which is equal to u x tensor u y composed by theta x tensor theta 
1. So remember the naturality of the tensor. Um, If you have f fx gx fy gy this is equal to fx tensor fy X tensor Y. Naturality of the tensor. <clears throat> OK. Uh, OK. So you can do that. You can group together the that and that, and that, etc. Now, <clears throat> but as we proved before, we proved this relation about the drain fed dimorphism. <clears throat> We are almost done. So, <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. so wait. So, what should I do? U X U Y. Mm. Okay, so U X tensor U Y compose theta X equal to so we replace that but what we know so it's equal to U X tensor U tensor Y compose C Y X or C X Y compose with Theta x tensor theta y. Okay, now <clears throat> we can simplify by um, by that <clears throat> because it's a, it's a, u is isomorphism. U is a natural isomorphism, so you can simplify. Okay, you get uh, theta x tensor y equal c x y compose c y x compose theta x tensor theta y. Um, okay. Mm. So this is not exactly what I expected for the twist. Wait, 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 wait. Mm. Wait. Uh -huh. Uh, so did I make a mistake somewhere? So this equal this, this equal this, and this. Um, Let me 
let me check some stuff. Mm. Let me check uh, something. Twist, twist, twist on bridge. I am, I am not in the good for the according to the definitions this should be here so maybe I make a mistake somewhere um, maybe here uh, Mm. Maybe it commute, I don't know. Uh. So I've, I have no time to, to search too much. Uh. Mm -hmm. Problem. Problem. It should be theta x compose theta y compose c y x compose c x y. I have no time to look for the mistake, so I'll just leave it as a, as a question. Where is a mistake? So I leave it as a as a question like that as an exercise maybe. So now, what about the other way? So if if theta is a twist, so we have. Um, phi x tensor phi y um, equal to so this that we know phi x compose ui ux ui compose the theta x theta y. Now, if it is um, so we know by the joint field mechanism relation, so maybe the problem is in the joint field. Let me check that also. ux uy equal no it's okay it's fine. so we know that you that we know the relation from the Rinfeld morphism so this is equal to so we have to no so it is equal to u x tensor y compose y Compose with so this is a twist here. 
So that should be. Hmm. Um, so what we need is the following. Um, Cx y inverse compose C y x inverse compose with theta x tensor y. So this is. Uh, hmm. Uh, it is also not that strange. I have a real problem with that. Hmm. Problem also, same problem as above. Same problem as above. So assuming it looks like that, then it's equal to, then you can simplify. You can simplify that and that, that and that, and you get u x tensor y compose theta x tensor y, which is phi of x tensor y. Okay. <clears throat> um, so according to that, what we need for the twist, we use a twist relation like that. Um, so let me write it, a remark. So, uh, remark. According to the problem above, we need this twist relation XY. Yx, yx, yx compose x, y compose theta x tensor theta y. So maybe it commute. I have no time to check now. Um, Uh, yeah, but the usual twist is why the extensor theta y compose c x y compose c y x. Um, so maybe that commute with that. This is strange. I have to check that later. Anyway, so I, I leave that. I have no time. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So maybe here we want we want to do this way. So what I will do, I will. Um, um, I will look to this problem and I will I will fix the slide. So if um, if I can fix the problem, I will change the slide. So should it be 
like that. Okay. Okay, so let us continue. <sighs> mm -hmm. So eighty seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will fill that later. Now, we will state a result. So we, we will need what we used, what we defined in the previous chapter called the distinguished invertible object. So let me briefly recall what I mean by that. And, um, we will state a relation between this uh, distinguished invertible object and uh, using uh, involving the Greenfeld morphism. So recall. So let S be the socle of the projective cover. Of the projective cover of one. So the sock is maximum um, semi simple sub object sub object and the projective cover is so you the px, so you have an epimorphism between px and x plus some universal property. Universal property. So <clears throat> the projective cover of x is some px such that you have an epimorphism. And universal property say that if you have another epimorphism, blah, 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 it, you have a commutative integral. So s is a socle of the projective cover of one, then the dual distinguished invertible object is the double dual of S. Then, and in fact, in the, at this level of the book, it just call it the distinguished invertible object. So I put dual in parentheses, but in chapter seven, it's called the dual distinguished, distinguished invertible object. Invertible object D isomorphic to the double dual of S. Um, and recall there exists a natural isomorphism delta V defined by a collection of isomorphism delta V between V double star to Z tensor right, double right dual of V tensor Z inverse. So this is written in, uh, in the section 719 of the book. So you have this um, natural isomorphism and we will use it to state the relation we mentioned the theorem let be a braided finite tensor category braided finite tensor category let d and delta x b as recalled above. And let u 
be the drain field isomorphism. So drain field isomorphism. Then, so we have this uh, relation, evaluation map of this star tensor identity of double right dual of x composed with identity of the tensor reading double we, in fact later we will use this relation in the unimodular case which means d equal one and you see we will see in the unimodular case so this relation is much easier U inverse double right dual of x compose U dual of U on the right dual of x. Okay. So let me write this relation uh, like that. So uh, this equality gives an equality of natural isomorphism. So this defines an equality of natural isomorphism parameterized by X. Gives an equality. Giving or giving. <coughs> giving an equality of natural isomorphism. C is a braiding, so it's okay. We already mentioned C. Okay, so the proof. So I did not prepare the proof because it's too long. We are in the, in the last uh, the last session. So skipped. So the proof of that is was not completely trivial. Two pages in the book. So corollary. Let's see. And D as above. Then for all object in C, the braiding CD compose braiding DV equals identity of D tensor V. And we will prove using this equality. <clears throat> so let me just write the sketch of the proof. So the right hand side of the previous equality, what we call uh, this equality star. Here, so right hand star is invariant. So here, this is invariant by re by taking the reverse braiding. Is invariant by taking the reverse braiding. Next, so is the the left hand side so if the right hand side is invariant the left hand side is also invariant by taking the reverse braiding now the definition of delta x does not depend uh, does not use c here, <clears throat> so, so this is independent of taking the inverse braiding. This is independent of C, and all the rest is independent of C. So this is equal to taking the same with the inverse. So you get. 
So, si dit V equal si inverse V dit. Something like that. So, you replace, uh, yeah. Ok. Now. We will use this uh, corollary to prove that if a braided category is factorizable, then it is unimodular, which means that d equal one. So recall the definition of factorizable. So you have C. Um, so the embedding of, of a braided category into the center, or the embedding of the reverse to the center, like that, C inverse. D'accord. So as we already mentioned, when, you, when you, we define the factorizable, they combine together into a single braided tensor functor. Braided tensor functor. G from C. C rev to the center. And uh, so C is called factorizable if G is an equivalence factorizable if G is an equivalence. So this we already did that before. Okay. Now we can state and prove the following proposition. Proposition. If C is factorizable, finite answer category, then it is unimodular, which means that D equal one. So by the previous corollary, corollary, C V equal C D V inverse for all V in C. So this object is in the center as a image of C, but we also that this, which is also in the center as an image of C reverse, but they are equal. We know that they are equal. <clears throat> so um, these two are the same object. <clears throat> so, um, so this, so this object, this object is in the intersection of the image is in the intersection of the image of C and the image of C reverse, which is trivial because 
G is assumed to be an equivalence. G is assumed to be an equivalence by definition of factor is involved. So trivial, so D equal one, the trivial object, <clears throat> which is a uh, unimodular. Okay. So let me restate um, the equality star, uh, orange star here, in the unimodular case which was, we were supposed to use that later, but we will have no time. So it will be for the next semester. So remark. <clears throat> In the unimodular case, case, um, Uh, um, then, so you have d equal one. So the this natural isomorphism is directly is like that, and equation uh, orange star. is uh, delta x equal u inverse the like that directly in fact every almost everything vanish here when you put uh, d equal one hello <coughs> So if d equal one, this is trivial. So this is identity, 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 identity. So you just that, just this one. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Mm. Identity of X, yeah. <clears throat> so just that. <clears throat> and uh, okay. So that's okay. So we were, we were supposed to use that later, but so. We have, if you put triple star, you get U inverse X star, compose U X double star, and U X triple star. So we, we, in fact, later we, we use, we will use this delta X triple star inverse, which is equal to, uh, uh, so u x double star inverse star composed with u x star. And here we need these two relations a compose b inverse equal b inverse compose a inverse and uh, F inverse star equal F star inverse. <clears throat> okay. This equality will be used later. In fact, it will be used later to prove that if the twist, um, so what is the
I, I can state, in fact. I have time to state, I will have maybe no time to proof. It will be used in the proof, in the proof of the following proposition. Proposition. Let C be a braided fusion category. Fusion category. We need fusion here with a twist theta. The canonical pivotal structure. Pi equal theta compose with u. We know it's a twist of so this is uh, a pivotal structure. And in fact, I can check here whether it's theta u or u theta. The problem I got above theta u or u theta, where is it? u theta. Yeah, so it's theta u, yeah. That's, I guess this is a problem I got here. It's, it, should be, it, should, it should be like that. And I guess if I use it correctly here, everything should be okay. So I, I, will, uh, I will fix the slide uh, later. So the slide you will get will be fixed about this point. So the, then the pivotal structure uh, is spherical. If and only if theta is a ribbon structure. Which means that we have something uh, for this, uh, <coughs> this, if you have this equality, this is a twist, if and only if, this is pivotal, and now this is spherical. If and only if this is ribbon, so you have uh, you have an automorphism of the identity. It can be a twist, which is equivalent to that to be pivotal, and it's a ribbon, which is equivalent to that to be spherical. It's quite uh, interesting here. Um, I have no time. Uh, no time, no time. Mm. Four minutes. I have no time to finish the proof, but I have no time to do something else. Uh, okay, let me try to start. So proof. Maybe I can prove one way. So uh, theta x equal phi x composed with u x inverse. So theta x star equal star composed u x inverse star. C x star equal phi x compose view x inverse star. Okay. So ribbon is equivalent to phi x star equal phi x compose view x inverse star compose view x star. We just write that equal that. You put that here and this here, you put this uh, on the other side. Now, <clears throat> um, okay. 
by naturality. And here I recall, I, I wrote in details. Uh, so by naturality. We have um, Phi X naturality of uh, of U by naturality of U. Of U. You use a naturality, it's a natural transformation, you use naturality of U. And you get phi x compose u x inverse equal uh, u x u in double star composed with phi x double star. So I have no time to write the details of that, but it's an exercise. In fact, I. <coughs> And uh, okay, so ribbon is equivalent to phi x star equal u x double star inverse compose phi x double star compose u x star. So we just come back to the to the function delta. Uh, this is equal to star here. Yeah. This is equal to phi x double star star composed with u inverse x double star star composed with u x star and here you recognize uh, phi delta in x triple star in the unimodular case okay because uh, C is fusion. So fusion is semi simple and semi simple, finite semi simple is unimodular. So you get uh, this. So you get this here. So, so I will finish. Uh, So, mm. so ribbon is equivalent to, so you can have this relation. Yeah, I think I don't have time. Anyway, so I just came back to, I just came back to, to, to recover that. And then, in fact, you can write this reduced to the simple case, but in the simple case, the home space are one dimensional. So we are reduced to take the trace. So we are reduced to take the trace of that equals the trace of that. And then uh, we have another relation with the trace. And so we can get that you get exactly the definition of the spherical because here phi is, a, is, a, is a pivotal structure. So phi is a, this is a pivotal structure. So you get using trace, etc., that it's spherical and everything is an equivalence. So, um, yeah. So, and of session. And end of semester.
end of the proof next semester. OK. <clears throat> OK, we can stop here. <gasps>